how many cameras is too many cameras well hello everybody and welcome to another episode and thank you once again for checking in well i've got a question to ask today and that question is how many cameras is too many cameras is one camera such as this olympus om30 is that too many cameras well probably not if you're a keen photographer is two cameras too many well probably not but what about three is three cameras too many well maybe again you could get away with three if you're a very keen photographer but when the number gets towards 50 which is i think the number of cameras i've got 50 odd then you've got to start thinking have i got too many cameras and that's my question for you today and for me as well uh, if it comes to it and i'll tell you how it all began it all began with this camera this is my dad's old pentona 35 millimeter it's not quite a point and shoot it's got uh, variable shutter speeds and variable apertures but there's no range finder on it so you had to sort of guess the distance or or measure the distance and this was the camera this was the machine that i first realized when i was three years old i first realized this was a machine for making pictures i don't even know if it still works actually i don't think it does no it doesn't but anyway i was fascinated since then and i've never really never really lost that fascination now in 1978 for christmas i was given this fed 4l camera i wanted a zorky 4k at the time but this one was slightly cheaper and it was a bit better because it's got a built-in light meter and i was given this in 1978 so you can see that my enthusiasm hadn't waned since i was three years old since the time i was 14 years old and this camera is my original fed 4 and it still works just as well as the day it was made it's taken tens of thousands of images possibly more and uh, it's been a great little camera but it was a limiting camera i knew at the time it was old technology it was essentially 30s technology and i could see all the om1s and fe2s and so on in the shops in dixon's and i did lust after them but i knew that this was my limit at the time and so i used it and used it and used it however there came a time there came a time in around about 2002 2003 when digital cameras came in and suddenly suddenly everybody wanted a dslr nobody wanted their film kit anymore and film equipment film photography equipment became very 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 cheap and let me have a look i've jotted down some of the prices somewhere uh yeah nikon canon olympus you could buy those cameras all day long for 40 pounds or so with a lens obviously some of the you know the more uh, professional models went for more but you could buy fe's and fe2's f and fm's all day for 40 50 60 pounds with a lens all day long in 2002 2003 and when i saw them so cheap i think because i'd because i'd been so interested when i was younger and been so sort of limited by my fed four and, and and so desirous of these other cameras which i couldn't possibly buy that i began collecting them at that time when they were really cheap so i'll tell you some of the bargains that i got in fact you could even get leicas really really cheap at that time and i bought this leica 2 this is my old favorite my old leica 2 i've had this for years and years and i'll never sell it it needs a cla because it's a bit difficult to wind and when i fire it 
you'll hear that it's not so quiet as it should be. It should be whisper quiet, but it's a lovely, lovely little camera. It has everything you need, nothing you don't. And this camera in 2008, I believe it was, they were still cheap at that time, cost me 90 pounds. There was no lens with it, it was a body only, but it was in perfect working order. And it's an original 1932 Leica II with the brass plug in the back. So, you know, it's a very, very early one. And uh, I bought this from a well-known professor of photography who'd been using it for portraits. So these were cheap at that time. Um, I bought this uh, Kiev. Uh, I can't, I don't know the designate. There's all sorts of designations of Kievs. This is the one with the light meter on the top anyway. I think it's a 3A. It's either a 3 or a 3A. And it's from 1955. Now, it's hardly been used and it's, it's in almost as new condition. There is one dent on it, a tiny little dent, which I think you can hardly see, which is just on the corner of this um, light meter housing, which I think maybe one day I'll pull out or just tap out very, very gently. But this is a camera from 1955. Now, if I were to sell this camera, where's it going to go? It's either going to go to someone who thinks, yeah, I'll have a go at 35mm photography and perhaps not quite know what they're doing and perhaps no, not quite know that they've got such a valuable rare old camera or it's going to go to a collector and sit on a shelf for years and years and never do anything, which, to be fair, is almost what it's doing at the moment. See, the thing is, I don't use any of these cameras very much. I, I do use film cameras and some of these film cameras have got film loaded into them. Um, which one? Where is it? The Zorky 3. A beautiful, beautiful camera which I'll never sell, which I bought for the bargain price of £50. In, I think it was 2007, I bought this for £50. Can you imagine that? The slow speeds didn't work. I knew that they get dirty in these cameras and all you have to do is slosh them out with lighter fluid because they're at the bottom right here of the camera and they get all the dust and the grime over the years. So now it works perfectly. Can I sell this camera? No, I can't. I don't think I can ever sell this camera because it's a beautiful thing. It's a historical model and it's a lovely, lovely little camera as well. Far better than the Zorky 4 and rather more nicely made as well. But when those cameras were really cheap and they were really, really cheap, I just carried on collecting them and I already had loads of them uh, in my collection when the channel started, when I started the channel and I continued to buy them for the channel because they stayed cheap for a long, long time and you can still get bargains. Now, I have not stopped buying stuff for the channel, by the way, just because prices have gone up because you can still get bargains now. But while they were cheap, I did continue buying them for the channel for many years. I bought this Olympus OM2 SP. This is one of my biggest bargains. I couldn't believe this. I got this with a made in Japan 100 millimeter, sorry, 50 millimeter 1.8 lens on it, plus an Olympus uh, half macro, you know, the half macro one, the one to two one, 3.5, 50 mil. Oh, there's a letter at the door. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, uh, and, and so I bought those all together and I paid a hundred pounds for those. And this camera, I think has hardly been used, if at all. It's it's like a brand new camera. It's like it's just come out of its box. Again, if I sell this camera on, it might go to an enthusiast. It might go to somebody who really, really look after it and love it. It might go to a youngster who's experimenting with film and who will really love it and take care of it. Or it might not, it might just get knocked about somewhere and ignored and left and I don't know, I don't know. I do, I feel a responsibility to these 
old machines I really do and now that I've sort of got them and rescued them and keep them in good condition I just don't want to let them go to somebody who 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 might not keep them in as good condition as 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 I have it doesn't matter to me really once I sold them but I don't know I just love the old machinery so I carried on collecting this Leningrad I bought, I'd wanted one of these for some time. This is the marvellous mechanical, not mouse organ, but Leningrad. And this is the one with the clockwork motor. So you wind up a little bit. And then you can do as many shots as you like. Oh, there we go, it's run out of juice. I like to keep it with a little bit of tension in the spring just a little bit like you're supposed to do with gramophones you're supposed to keep a little bit of tension in that spring don't let them run right down keep a little bit of tension in it so the spring doesn't break they can break if you let them go right down so i always keep a bit of tension in this one again this is a collectible camera there were very very few of these made it's relatively rare if i sell it on where does it go probably to a collector who doesn't use it very much and gets stuck in a cupboard. I at least have used it a few times. So I don't know, it's a very difficult one and it's got to the point where I have got too many cameras and I have, and I am running out of space to keep them and I'm asking myself questions like, why should I keep this Leica 2 when this Zorky one will do exactly the same job and is essentially exactly the same camera, will work with exactly the same lenses just as well and produce just as nice images. Shall I sell the Leica and keep the Zorky? Well, here's the thing. I'm emotionally attached to these machines. That's why I keep them. I actually have an emotional attachment to them. That might sound a bit odd having a, an emotional attachment to these silly old machines because in the end that's all they are but I do have an emotional attachment to them like my old motors. I've got an old Rover P6, I've got an old Jag X J6 um, and I'm emotionally attached to those machines as well and I wouldn't like to see those go Either I'm going to do my best to keep keep hold of those. So what do I do with all these cameras? I mean, I've got cameras from 1932. This is my latest. I'll show you my latest film camera. And this is one of the film cameras that I like the most, actually. This is the Canon EOS 3000N. And you know why I like this? It's all auto. You just put the film in, click, click, click. And there you go, it's even autofocus. So I love this camera. It can take the modern uh, EF lenses, as I believe. And um, so it's got a slightly, you know, standard kit zoom on it, 28 to 90 at the moment. What is it? 4.5 to uh, 4 to 5.6. So it's a very standard zoom thing that's on it at the moment. But you can put nice lenses on these. And they're all auto, which is a great boon, which speeds things up and uh, brings us into the uh, technical age a little bit. Speeds things up than, uh, rather more than using the mechanical cameras. But even using the mechanical cameras, I still love the slowness of the process. I love the mechanistic nature of the process. I love the fact that you're physically moving controls and you can feel the gears moving under your fingers. So I don't know, I just continued collecting these things. I even collected something like this. This is a beautiful thing. This is a Roly A110 Tessar. Can you see it there? A Roly A110 um, pocket, little tiny pocket camera designed to make uh, take uh, 110 film which you can still get and can still get developed you can't really get it printed so easy but it's nice and easy to get developed uh, and you can then scan it uh, and that's uh, easy enough I've not used this camera very much but it's in it's in its case it's got its little leather case with it it's even got it's even got whoop 
it's even got a little battery with it in its little battery point. I'm sure that's long worn out now. Here's the little flash thing and here's the little keychain thing that you were going to supposed to keep it on. That was very, very cool and groovy little thing in the 70s, a little, a little keychain, a little snake chain. Let's pop them all back in there. I think I've used this camera once. I've used it once. That's how little I've used it. But I'm still fascinated by it. I don't want to sell it. I've got about three of these. I bought them when they were, you know, 10, 20 quid each. I don't want to sell them because they're such beautiful, beautiful things. Um, and then, of course, things do break down. Right, here's my Olympus Trip 35. Now this little camera is supposed to not, oops, pardon me, is supposed to not work with insufficient light, but you'll see that this one clicks fine in insufficient light when I cover the uh, sensor with my hand. So something's gone wrong with this little camera while it's been in storage. I don't know what. I've stored it carefully. I've kept it dry. I've kept rice and sashes of all sorts of drying stuff in the cupboard but no it's just too old so i don't know here's a here's a, a, a an example of of a camera that i really wonder if i should keep i mean it, it would be difficult to sell because it's not really worth very much there is a guy i know who will fix these up to new standard but that costs a fair about amount of money which uh, i don't have to hand at the moment so I don't know, what shall I do with my Trip 35? I don't know. They do break down and they do get tired and, and they do just conk out. Even just sitting doing nothing, they'll conk out like this little Olympus Trip 35 has done. And that is one of the dangers of collecting things. If you're not regularly using things, you'll probably know this from old cars if you got one. If you don't use an old car, if you keep it in a garage for a year or for six months, don't start it, don't run it. My gosh, things will go wrong with it. The brakes will seize up. The engine isn't going to be particularly willing to start. The fuel's going to go off. And the same thing happens with cameras. They just sort of, I don't know, they just sort of degenerate over time. But I've been very, very lucky. The only thing that's gone wrong with any one of my cameras is this little Olympus trip. Now, I bought all of these cameras when they were pretty cheap, when you could get them for peanuts, as I used to be very fond of saying. Um, but they're now increasing a little in value to the point where they're probably worth at least double what I paid for them. It's not a massive increase over the years, but it is an increase over the years. So one thing that does occasionally pass through my mind, and this is only occasionally because I didn't buy these for investments, but they're not making these cameras anymore. These are all in nice condition. Maybe they'll go up in price. I don't know. It'll probably take years and years and years for them to acquire any significant value. And <laughs> to be honest, I don't know if I'll still be around when they when they do. But who knows? They might do. That's that's one reason for keeping them. So what should I do? Should I keep them and hope the value goes up? Should I sell some? Shall I thin down the collection and get some other ones in? Shall I keep them for xenography photograph? It walks. This is a thing. This is an idea I've been that's been bubbling in the back of my mind for a little while. Shall we do some xenography photographic walks? That might be fun, but it also might not be fair on a lot of viewers because, because I know loads and loads of people watch this show in America and I'm really grateful that you do. Um, but even for the people in the UK, I live in London. It's a long way to London from certain other places. Would that be fair for people only in London to be able to turn up? I don't know, but we could do some xenography photographic walks and you could get to use all this kit. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be kind of nice. What else could I possibly 
do with them? Could I arrange an equipment swap? Could we have an equipment swap maybe where we swap cameras? I don't know, that's a possibility. Again, a meet up in a London pub somewhere. But again, that might be unfair for you know viewers around the world, viewers around the country who can't easily get to a London pub somewhere. So, so there we go. Um, or should I just keep them, enjoy them, and give each one of them an occasional bit of exercise? Run a bit of 35 mil, cheap black and white 35 mil through them uh, every couple of months and um, keep them in good condition that way. One thing I always do with them, always, and I regularly do this, is I take them out of the cupboard where I keep them, I'll give them a wind, and I'll fire the shutter, and I'll, then I'll do it again, and I'll do it a few times, maybe 10 times, just to keep that mechanism moving regularly. You know, like if you have an old car, you'd want to run the engine at least once every month. Well, I think you want to fire these a few times and work all the mechanisms, range finder mechanisms and so on, at least once every month. I think that's a good idea if you're going to keep them. But tell me what you think I should do with all these uh over 50 cameras that I've got. Some are lovely uh, old classic SLRs, some are fairly new SLRs with all auto stuff, some are uh, nice high-end points and shoots like the Nikon L L35 AF. Some are cameras that I probably, well, hardly ever use like the Roly 110 I showed you before. Tell me in the comments box below what you think I should do with them that would be very very much appreciated one thing is for sure I do have a considerable collection of cameras and um, most of them I bought for the show just to show you and uh, you know keep the show going and compare them and blah 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 the usual thing I do on the show so most thing I, most of them are bought for that but tell me in the comments box what you think I should do the more comments the better on this one please everybody get involved um, give me loads of comments on this one because I do need to know where to go I've got a plan forming in my mind that I think I might do with them but let me know what you think because that will be really really appreciated so I guess that's about it from me for this week I've shown you some of my collection of my rather too large collection of cameras. Some of them fancy, some of them not fancy, some of them simple, some of them complex. All of them I've got an emotional attachment to and all of them I think are beautiful and I'm going to find it very difficult to sell them on. So uh, if you've got any ideas, do put them in the comment. But as I say, that is it from me for this week. So thank you very, very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate how many of you come back time after time to watch this channel. Many, many thanks to subscribers. That is a heartfelt thanks to you guys. Thank you for all your support. Many, many thanks to patrons. That is a heartfelt thanks to you guys, especially for all your support. Thank you, thank you to everybody who supports the channel and to everybody who watches the channel. That is a very important and meaningful thing to me. So thank you very much for that. As for me, I'm going to consider what to do and have a little think about what to do about all these preposterous collection of photographic instruments that I've managed to collect from a time when nobody really wanted them. So if you're not doing anything too irritating, too bothersome or too difficult next week, please do join me roughly the same time for a spot more xenography. Cheerio all. <laughs>